you have to develop a certain mindset, right? And the same thing when, when, when you got me carrying this chain up, <laughs> you know, probably, you know, a third of it through. So for like, those okay. listening, you, you may see on the internet every once in a while, I carry this chain, it's 83 pounds, there's a dog barking in the background, we're in the woods right now, I apologize. But um, it's got two big hooks for handles. We use it uh, for, for uh, the excavating machine when we have to strap it down on a trailer. And uh, it's become, I don't know, somewhat, it's like a sandbag almost, right? Drag yeah. the chain. And it's, it, it wakes you up. It wakes you up, and then especially when you decide to create new trails. <laughs> the steepest part of the mountain. <laughs> I did find the steepest part of the mountain for that. Welcome to the Spartan Up Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up Podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. On today's episode of Spartan Up, Joe DeSena talks with Nick Morris, the co-founder of Health Warrior. And after they reminisce a little bit about Wall Street days, you'll hear a conversation that will give you great insight into how Joe DeSena thinks about building his own resilience and the resilience and strength of those around him. Stay to the very end because at the end of this interview, Joe wraps it up with his thoughts, how you build endurance and resilience yourself and for young athletes. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by the Exogen Ultrasound Bone Healing System. If you or a loved one has a broken bone, talk to your doctor about Exogen. Exogen is indicated for the healing of non-union fractures and for accelerating the healing of certain acute fractures with no contraindications. To learn more, visit exogen.com, E-X-O-G-E-N.com. All right, we are here with Spartan Up Podcast with Nick Morris, an old friend of mine. We know each other, what, 20 years? Uh, I think about, um, actually, no, it's probably been half that. It's probably like 2010, because right when we were starting Health Warrior, when did you start Spartan? I started Spartan 2010. Okay, and we were kind of hitting Health Warrior at the same time. With Shane and Dan. Yeah, that makes sense. But I've um, probably known Dan longer. I know Dan longer, probably yeah. twenty years. I know you ten years. Yeah. The first time I think I met you, I think you came to the office wearing one shoe because a dog stole your other shoe or something, <laughs> something crazy like that. <laughs> so um so yeah, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people listening and watching don't know that uh the whole Wall Street back, right? They only know sure. me for Spartan and yeah. so you've been working on Wall Street. 20 years? Uh, yeah, uh, since 1996. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did. That's when I started. <laughs> right. And right. and um, what's it like? Uh, it's changed a lot from your from your day. So back in the day, uh, you know, I'm a trader, so I focus on the trading day-to-day kind of grunt work, if you will. Used to be very important back in the day. Um, used to be, you know, you and I would talk and we would be able to trade merchandise. A lot of that stuff has gone electronic, so... So you kind of have to step up your, your quant game. So it's it's no different than kind of what you do here, right? Like sometimes you need to use certain skills and some, sometimes those skills kind of, um, you know, retire out a little bit and you got to learn new ones. So it's it's a So depth. for those that don't know, right, because maybe maybe people listening are retail investors or whatever, mm-hmm. just walk through a, a typical hour on a trading in the old days and today. Yeah, old days. Old days was pretty much phone phone only. So a little bit of electronic, a little bit um, you could send orders to the floor of the stock exchange and, and So an and, order an order would look like you know, buy fifty thousand shares of XYZ stock. Right? right. And and typically, you know, think about what I do. It's you know, Joe, you would you would send me merchandise all day. I've got this for sale, I got this to buy, and I would and I would, you know, buy and sell from you, right? right. And, and, and I'd buy wholesale, right? Because I'd be buying 50,000, 100,000, 500,000 shares at a time. Right. Now you don't get those calls so much anymore. It's a little bit buys and sells, but you really have to be creative and find where where they're, where the orders are hiding. So those 500,000 share orders that you used to have at Burlington, those are now chopped up in many different places. They might sit in a dark pool. So I might stumble upon them somehow, like, yeah. you know, go into a dark pool, find them in the dark pool, but it's not as easy. You have to be, you have to be a little bit more of a detective nowadays. Um, and, and you're sitting at a desk and uh, typically in the old days, not eating so healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, we joke all the time, um, you know, back in the 2000s, it was, uh, um, you know, bagels in the morning every day. Um, and when people bring in bagels now, we laugh. We're like, what do you think? It's 2005. Come right. on. Because <laughs> right. now, now everybody's on a keto 
yeah. right? Veggies, yeah. green juices. Yeah. yeah. So that, you know, and it used to be hung, you were hung over in the morning, right? Because you're yeah. out all night at some yeah. silly dinner. Yeah. Dinners every night, guys. Yeah. Steak dinners, you know, yeah. red wine, all that. Come in, your, your performance stinks the next day. Um, you know, and quite frankly, you know, it's it's funny because I wear I wear this whoop. whoop watch right yeah. and everybody's got these these monitors now yeah and and we've talked about i think sleep's so important now yeah that you know if if i was running my own business i would in you know it required mental you know acuity i would mandate you know that people get you know seven or eight hours of sleep whatever that is right yeah. um because we definitely weren't getting it back in the day no i remember people uh stumbling in that hadn't slept at all that yeah. night and then you're expecting them to be high performers and yeah I mean, I like to say, I don't know if you believe this or not, I like to say in business, we're Olympians and we got to get a gold medal every day. And yeah. so why don't we treat ourselves like Olympians? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, and I think you know, the nice thing is people are, people are doing that now. You know, you'll see um, kind of like my brother with, with Spartan Race. He gets, yeah. you know, instead of a fundraiser at a bar, it's a fundraiser at Spartan Race. Right. And you've been very kind with that. And I thank you very no much. Problem. You, know, yeah. you know, Joe's done a lot of stuff for Michael J. Fox Foundation. Spectacular. They raised tons of money and hopefully we can, you know, kill that disease. But but that's the mentality now. Now it's it used to be drinks. Let's meet up for drinks. It's, you know, people do spin classes or workouts or, um, you know, all sorts of do things. Do hard sh together. Exactly. So let's talk about Michael J. Fox Foundation yeah. and that whole thing with your brother. Yes, so I don't know. Maybe it was 10 years ago. So uh, it was five years ago. Yeah. Um, so your memory, you double everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, five years ago, you know, I get a call from my brother. He's like, you know, can I meet you on the corner? I'm like, sure. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, we work fairly close to each other. I'm thinking like, what, what could he be telling me? And, you know, he comes up. He's like, hey, I just want you to know I, got, I have early onset Parkinson's age 36 or 37 years old. You know, as a big brother, uh -huh. and he was six years younger than me, that's like... Punch still, in the chest. It, it punched in the chest. I mean, I still kind of get choked up thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, his response has been spectacular. It's you know, he's like, listen, I could have can I could have cancer. I could have all these other things that are worse. I have this. I know how I can control it, and you know, I got to get after it. And the things were, you know, clean living, um, sleep, uh, exercise, and quite frankly, when he goes back to the doctors now. They keep asking, "What are you doing?" Because it's it's progressing so slowly. You know, the thing that stinks is this is a it's a progressive disease. It's it's you can't stop it. But he slowed it down so much by you know kind of living the Spartan life. And uh, and like I said, he gets he gets. I think he's had sixty to eighty people, you know, kids included, you know, coming down Spartan races, and it's such a it's such a great event. That's awesome. Um, but so uh, you were feeling you're on Wall Street. And you're feeling like you needed something else, so you started Health Warrior. Yeah, so it, you know it was one of those things. I played football in college, always active. Yeah, you know, ended up having three kids, and and you know it's kind of that that thirty, you know those thirties, and it's all you know I played it kind of we call it two twenty five, and all of a sudden I'm two forty, a little bit slothy, you know, and just not feeling right. So uh, actually read the book Born to Run. A friend of mine, uh, Matt West, kind of said, "Hey, listen." read this book about this this Indian tribe. And, and I kept putting it off, putting it off. I read about it. They talk about Chia in there. I try it. I'm like, wow, this stuff's pretty cool, right? But again, it's Chia, whole food, instead of that bacon, egg, and cheese, right. instead of that bagel and cream cheese, you right. know? So so it, it makes sense, like, when you think about it. But also, when you when you look at the, uh, you know, the, the kind of nutritional value that Chia had, you know, plant-based protein, you know, all, you know, omega threes, just everything. It makes sense that it, that it, you know, felt so good. And that's when I gave it to Dan. I said, Dan, try, you know, you're the healthiest Dan, guy. The guy we both knew. Dan Gluck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Dan Gluck. I think he's been on the podcast also. I said, yeah. Dan, try this stuff. Let me know if you, if you think it works. He came back and said, I love it. So that's when we, uh, we started Health Warrior. We got Shane Emmett, who you know very well. Yeah. Uh, Shane is a, a magic worker and he kind of took the idea and turned it into something. And, and then we ended up selling it to Pepsi. That's awesome. And and uh, basically, it's bars. You take chia and yeah. you make a bar. We we yeah. We first started out selling the chia because at the time, uh, where you can kind of find chia everywhere now, you, you really could only find it on the internet, and you'd get it, and it'd be it'd be really dirty. There'd be sticks and twigs, and you didn't know if you're going to find like a <laughs> finger in it or something, you know, uh, like a little hippie smell with it. Also, yeah. Um, and so we found we we ended up going down to Bolivia, finding the best supplier, ISO certified, you know, everything clean, purity, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we were selling it. Uh, for like twenty dollars a bag, wow. and then the commodity guys 
you know, saw what was happening and then, you know, it became basically a commodity. We decided we needed a, a final product, you know, a finished product. And that's when we turned to bars and yeah. uh, we got into the bar space. And then we evolved from chia bars to then pumpkin seed bars and some other stuff. I remember uh, I was in a, I was in an airport, maybe LaGuardia, and I saw them. I think I ate seven in a row. <laughs> yeah, I think you texted me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably cost you a fortune. They were really expensive in the- They uh, were expensive at that time. In the- uh, So, so- um. You said from that, from the chia, catapulted you into this endurance space where you're hanging out with a bunch of people going up and down mountains, carrying yeah. chains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I carried a chain was this morning, but that was fun. I'm going to have to do it again. But yeah, so so um, different than football. Much different from football. And, you know, you find, I kind of wish I had that mentality. You know, football is very much, you know, it's six to 10 seconds, right? And, and but by the end of the first quarter, sometimes you're like, Wow. I got another three quarters. This is this is something, and so you have to de- you have to f- develop a certain mindset, right? And the same thing when 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 you got me carrying this chain up, <laughs> you know, probably, you know, a third of it through. So, for like, those okay. listening, you you may see on the internet every once in a while. I carry this chain. It's eighty three pounds. There's a dog barking in the background. We're in the woods right now. I apologize, but um, it's got two big hooks for handles. We use it uh, for for uh, the excavating machine when we have to strap it down on a trailer, and uh, it's become. I don't know, somewhat, it's like a sandbag almost, right? Drag yeah. the chain. And it's, it, it wakes you up. It wakes you up, and then especially when you decide to create new trails. <laughs> <laughs> the steepest part of the mountain. <laughs> I did find the steepest part of the mountain for that. But um, yeah, so would you recommend to the very structured football players, soccer players, baseball players, whatever, stuff like this? We'll be right back to this interview. But first, a little bit of information from Exogen, today's sponsor. Spartans, a broken bone can interrupt your daily activities and even worse, keep you on the sidelines. Choosing the best treatment can be stressful. You can jumpstart your bone's natural healing process using Exogen 20 minutes a day. Exogen helps you get back in the race. Don't let a broken bone keep you on the sidelines. Talk to your doctor to see if Exogen is right for you. Exogen is indicated for the healing of non-union fractures and for accelerating the healing of certain acute fractures with no known contraindications. To learn more, visit exogen.com. That is E-X-O-G-E-N.com. And now back to the interview. Yeah, so would you recommend to the very structured football players, soccer players, baseball players, whatever, stuff like this? 100%. To up their game? 100%. I think, as we were talking about on the trails, you're working so many of your different muscles that you know, unfortunately, I think with, with all the specialty that's going on with kids and the way they train, it's, they're all doing the same thing. You know, they're not really, um, resilient, if you will, you know, they're, they're really good at doing these certain things that their trainers are telling them to do. But, you know, how do you care? How do you figure out how to carry a, uh, a chain up the mountain and what sort of techniques? I mean, I, I went from dragging it with behind my back to over my shoulder, you know, and you, and then you just think about all the other muscles that you're working, the core work, yeah. legs, all that sort of stuff. And, and then I think the biggest thing is, the, is the mental part, which I think you've really tapped into well. Yeah. Because I, I would think, I would think that if you had a very structured workout, like a wrestler, a football player, baseball, right. You, you know what the workout is. You got to pace yourself. You pace yourself. You got the whole thing dialed in. You never really get to a pain cave. I remember, I don't know if I told you this, I ran our Tahoe Beast, which was 13 miles with Randy Moss. And arguably one of the greatest football players ever, right? And he started crying next to me. (laughs) I believe it. And I said, Randy, you're an NFL football. He goes, this is the fucking hardest thing. This is nothing like that. NFL is easy compared to this. Yeah. And um, it's probably because now for everybody else, the NFL would have been hard, but that's what he did every day, all right? So you just get good at it. Yeah. And, it, you know, he played on his strengths, right? I mean, his, his strengths were NFL strengths. And so yeah. I think what happens with a lot of guys like that, like guys that are really good at certain sports, they, they don't have a weakness in those sports. So they really don't know how to overcome those weaknesses. And that's why I think something like this is so helpful because who knows when they get injured, then all of a sudden they're a little bit weaker and they have to the mental part of of the game kicks in yeah yeah and so then you have to be you have to find that mental resiliency somebody asked me yesterday actually um is it the mental part is it the physical part that gets you through and i and i i don't know if you agree with this or not but for me uh there are moments where my mind gives up and then my body's got to take over and there are moments where my body gives up and my mind's got to take over and it's almost like a fight that's going on nonstop, and you just can't you got to 
you got to make sure one is always winning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly, exactly. Just can't let them both quit on you. Yeah, and that's kind of yeah. I was, I was asking when we were growing up, you know, kind of what your technique was. I've I've found for me, yeah, just count steps to ten and just kind of keep repeating it, you know, because right. then I can get lost in that a little bit. Um, but then, but then you know, made a good point when you said, you know, but you want to feel it, right? Because that's 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 all what's part of this. Is, yeah. Is. Yeah, I like to go to that place that's really quiet and painful. And I remember somebody said to me years and years and years ago, like it's you could hear your heart beat yeah. it. Like, and so yeah. that's a fun place to go. I was to. feeling my heart today too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I kind of got a little sneak attack this morning. You you showed up, and I was crewing for Mark Nealon, and and you said, you know, we, we you got to go see Shrek's cabin and experience all. Yeah. This so stuff. for those just listening or watching, we're on the farm. We're on. Uh, Mount Sparta in Vermont, where a Spartan race was started. And Nick had this idea during the uh, pandemic, we had these warrior calls every morning. And apparently your friend Mark um, was annoyed that a bunch of races were canceled that he had trained for. So um, Mark said, hey, has anybody ever run up and down uh, the mountain in your backyard on the farm tw in 24 hours? I said, you know, no one's ever done, I mean, we've had it with a death race and stuff, but never a formal, all right, how many can you get done in 24 hours? So, um, you said you'd come up and crew for him, and it was just going to be you and him. Yeah. But I have a issue with like circuses, so I have to always create a circus around one tent pole. And you, you and Mark with a tent pole, and then we got thirty people here, and then another twenty kids. And yeah. how many have you done? <laughs> Only two. Why are you guys so far behind? Yeah, and it's been in in inspiring. You know, certainly as a as a spectator and a helper. Mm. Um. But like everything you do, you don't let somebody be a spectator and a helper. So, no, so I, I got called Yeah, action. I thought it'd be fun because you'd never yeah. been here before. Well, yeah. Let's go experience the mountain. And I don't know about you, but like you could go visit a place in the world and drive around in a car. And you see it, but you don't really see it, right? You could do it on a bike and you see it. But if you run it or walk it, you see every you, nook and cranny. You experience it. So what I yeah. thought was you haven't been here before. Why don't we really slow it down and carry a log and, a cha and drag a chain? Yeah. And- um. It was good. It was fun. It was yeah. good, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm it sucked. I'm, I, I'm, you got I'm you got sweating. Sweat you got my, rust uh, yeah. stains all over you from yeah. the chain. Yeah, we lived. We lived, and and um and you were asking, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, the big thing for me is is as you mentioned, like I I've, was more into strength and and football and and those type of things. And as right. I've gotten older in my life and kind of with Health Warrior, a little bit of experience to to endurance events, and so I don't really have kind of the the kind of experience background that you have. And so that's what I love finding out, um, you know, is, is, you know, what are your tricks and techniques to, to kind of get through the rough periods? So, um, first of all, I don't, I used to say, I used to have a saying like, I want to fall asleep in my soup. And in other words, that's the place I have to get to. It's a pretty magical, it sucks to get there. You got to go through a lot of dark spots to get there but when you get to a place where you're so tired you're so hungry you're so thirsty it you get a lot of clarity like nothing else matters like money issues right like uh, competition issues business fam nothing matters but like i just want to survive yeah i just want to get the fuck home and and so that's where i always want to go how long does that take you it depends. Like if you add the chain, you can get there quicker, right? If you add a log, if, like we, we, you and I were going up and I said, well, let's get off the beaten path and make it even worse. Because I've, over the years, I've wanted to get there faster. I don't want to go out for 24 hours and have to, right? Yep. Like yep. It's, I'm cheating a little bit. Right. Um, and, 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 um, and so then once you're there, how do you keep going? I mean, I cheat, right? I you go out with no money and you go in one direction and then you got to get home. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you have, there's no plan B. Like, right. and that's what I love about when the kids come up here because like, what are they going to do? They have to finish. So you can get them to that place and then they, they just have to finish. And so, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's is, is there a mantra or is there something that you like that you go to in your head? Is there a, a technique or anything though, or is it just, Head down, foot, one I mean, foot the, in front the, of the, the other. The simplest technique for me, very cliche, it's been around forever, is I'm just going to get to that tree. I'm just okay. going to get to that next flag. And then and then I learned this from Olympians, um, and then I could stop. 
I tell myself, once I get, that's good enough if I just get to that tree, but I know my personality, I'm not stopping. Right. But just saying that calms you down. Like, yeah, I'll just stop at that tree. Yeah. But then you go to the next tree and you go to the next tree. It's like, if you're doing 300 burpees, and Olympians have said this to me, like they have to, let's say they have to row seven hours a day. They don't wanna row. We think as civilians, they just must wake up, have motivation and wanna do it every day. Fuck no. They get up and they don't wanna do it. And so they say, you know what? We're just gonna row for a half hour. Half hour turns into an hour, turns into two hours. They get the seven hours done. You know from football, yeah. your stuff too, right? And so I, I tell myself it's going to be okay to quit, but you just don't quit. Right. You just don't quit. You got to have people around. So it's getting that kind of initial initial the movement. Inertia. Yeah. You, yeah. Right. You got you got to get that that movement going, and and um, and then you got to have people around, and people feed off each other. Like if you were working out at one level, if I did that chain alone today, I would have been at one level. You showed up, we went to another level. Right. Yeah. Right. Third person shows yeah. up. We, it's like unspoken. Well, I saw you trying to sprint with that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> it's I was like, like Joe, I thought this was a little slow. slow no, no, because up. because that's just what happens. Right. Right. When you when you work out in your garage, somebody shows up. It's like yep. game on. Yeah. Um. So well, I, I found that was helpful you know, in the quarantine, going back with your early morning workouts. Yeah. And you know, it was just me in the garage, but having. It just you on, it. on yeah. the iPad or in whoever else you'd it's bring like, in. Fuck, I know yeah. Nick is out there. I gotta. Right. I'm not gonna be a wimp. I gotta go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's and it's subconscious. It's not even like it's not your ego. It's not. Maybe it is ego, but it's camaraderie. Yeah. 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 Which is necessary in life. But um, I've had a few moments. I I had a moment in an Ironman where I I was done. I had done so many of them, and I just didn't feel. You know, the mind is tricky. The mind. Um, will give you logical reasons why you should quit. Oh, I don't want to get injured for the game. Oh, I forgot I got to get back to my wife. And and all these things subconsciously are going through your head on really logical reasons why you should stop because your body's trying to protect itself. Like, what, we don't want to be uncomfortable. Why would we want to be uncomfortable, right? That's, that's dangerous. And um, you just got to recognize that those are bullshit. And so I always, my bullshit test on that with other people and myself is, are you pissing blood? If you're not pissing blood... We are continuing. Right. You had kind of mentioned, we, we talked about it now that it's refreshing my memory. Uh, the first I ever heard of Joe DeSena was from Dan Gluck. Yeah. And when you ran from Central Park to Vermont. Yeah. And you had mentioned when you got to Burlington was the toughest part or something. You know, kind of yeah, when, I, when I, your goal was in sight, all of a sudden it became a little bit harder. When my goal was in sight. Um, yes. The beginning was, well, I wasn't tired yet. Like I like to say, uh, you take two people, one that's very fit and one that's not as fit. Um, the, the first hour or two, obviously the very fit person's not feeling it. The, the person not so fit at some point, they're both feeling it. And now what's your next move? Right. Right. And so I've seen lots of not so fit people beat the fit people because just mentally they're tougher. Right. And so the early parts of that, it was a 300 mile run where, um, it didn't kick in yet, but around 150, 160, it, it, it started to hurt. Um, 200. My body was on auto. I was flying. I was feeling great. I felt like F we are going to sail home. And when I got to about two set, thir within 30 miles, actually, when you saw me, Marion, who's hold who was behind the camera, I was broken. I was pretty broken. Uh, finish, finish line was in sight. And um, unlike the, the studies they've done on mice, where the mice goes through a maze, as it gets closer to the cheese, it speeds up. The opposite happens for me. I don't know so why. so what what took you in? What brought you in? Did you just have to like the stop? camera? I didn't even know Marion. This is a funny story. I met Marion for the first time. It's funny you asked the story. Uh, Fifteen miles from from my finish line, and she had a camera. I was like, "Who is this person with this camera?" That's <laughs> but there was a camera on me, right? right. So then all of a sudden you got to up your game. That's great. That's yeah. great. So bring a camera whenever you do. Bring a camera, even if it's got no. Yeah, even if it's not. Even if it's not charged, bring... just just show a camera. <laughs> In the distance. So this morning, what did any of that apply to you? What, what went through your yeah, head? Yeah, it... so obviously the first kind of third of it, it was trying to figure out what the hell is going on. What is Joe going to sneak attack me with? And, you know, <laughs> how much energy do I have to conserve? You know, all these t sort of things. Because I've never seen the trail before. Right. I mean, I've seen these people coming right. up. That's and right, because and... you did ask, hey, are we halfway? Yeah. Right, you're trying to figure out, all right, yes. how much should I give here? Yeah. Um, and, and so it ended up, you know, just... You know, 
over the right shoulder, over the left shoulder. And then when we got the, the log, the log was like the rest, yeah, right. almost yeah. like a toothpick. So, yeah. so it was kind of regaining strength when you took the log and then just knowing when you took the, the chain, it was going to have, you're going to have to figure it out. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think, you know, you were very helpful when you, when you did use, you told me about the technique of the next tree. Right. And I think I was, some of the ribbons, I'd be like, okay, just, just grind to the next ribbon, right. take a breath. Okay. Grind to the next rhythm. Uh, ribbon take a breath yeah um and pretend like i wasn't tired i had a huge advantage over you because i knew where we were right you had no idea no. if this was one no of those idea. joe stories where we'd be out exactly. there till midnight well i was wondering kind of when we were when we were <laughs> kept taking different paths and i could tell we weren't coming down the normal path right. that uh and there was a couple of times you looked around that maybe you were a little bit confused uh maybe that was that was acting but uh i, I was wondering how long i was going to be out there nice we got it done we did Good right. stuff. Nick's a great guy. Matter of fact, during the pandemic, Nick was kind enough to join me for 100 days in a row every single morning for the Warrior Call. I knew I had to be there. He knew he had to be there. We held each other accountable every single day, 527 a.m. Nick and I did that together. So what's interesting about Nick? I'll tell you what jumped out at me. He was able to do that little side hustle, right? He started up that company, Health Warrior, did not leave his job. A lot of people are afraid to start businesses. They're, they're afraid to do other things because of where they are. Nick was able to juggle both, which was pretty amazing, right? He brought in a partner, brought in a third partner that was able to run the business, and they ended up selling the Pepsi. So tremendous success story there, but not just not just success in business, but they were, they were very purposeful about bringing Chia, Chia, to the world, which was kind of cool. But then the big one, I think, is um, this morning when I made him carry the log and drag the chain around the mountain for two plus hours, uh, we got into this deep discussion about, I don't know, is it the mind? Is it the body? W what helps you get through tough times? And for me, which you've probably never heard from anybody any, you know, ever before, um, I kind of like to be in that place. I like to like soak it in and somehow find enjoyment in that pain. Like this sucks, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm cold. And um, I don't know, just relish in it for a minute. And then when you're completely broken, completely broken, I didn't know the science behind this, but the actual science says you have eight more days in you. I've always said eight more days, turns out the science says you got eight more days too. So when you can't move, you can't crawl, you can't muster up one more inch, you got eight days in you. And I think Nick and I got a little taste of that um, this morning. The other thing is, look, I just gotta make it to that tree. If I can make it to that tree, then we make it to the next tree, we make it to that flag, we make it here, we make it there. Before you know it, you've covered 300 miles, 500 miles, whatever it is, that thing you're getting after. So one, one thing that happened this morning that Nick didn't talk about was he said, hey, maybe my son and his team can come, um, come up to the farm but then he said, well, I don't want anybody to get injured. And I said, Nick, I hear that so much from, from uh, coaches, college coaches, high school coaches, junior high coaches of different sports. And I'm like, your training is so structured. You're afraid that walking up and down a mountain is gonna injure the athlete. What kind of athletes are these? Are these delicate, fragile athletes? So I implore you, if you know a coach out there, you know a school, you know a team, you know a student, and they're afraid to come out to the farm or go anywhere and do some quote unquote unorthodox training, carry a 10 pound rock up a mountain. You don't deserve to be an athlete. What kind of athlete are you? We got to make these athletes anti-fragile. Anyway, I'm out of here. I need you guys to comment. Tell me how you're going to make yourself and your family and your friends anti-fragile. What are you going to do and how do you get through tough times? I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and La Ruta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by the Exogen Ultrasound Bone Healing System. If you or a loved one has a broken bone, talk to your doctor about Exogen.
Exogen is indicated for the healing of non-union fractures and for accelerating the healing of certain acute fractures with no contraindications. To learn more, visit exogen.com, E-X-O-G-E-N.com.